Hi and welcome to this week's web design video blog. Busy James is out of meetings all day, so I'm introducing this week's tutorial. Today we're going to share 10 simple tips for designing websites in Photoshop. Now some of these tips might be obvious to the seasoned web designer. However, despite your experience, we're still hoping you'll learn a tip or two. So 10 great tips for designing websites in Adobe Photoshop. I personally use Photoshop to design uh, quite a few of my uh, layouts and concepts when creating websites. It's a great uh, platform to start in before you move into the, uh, into the coding aspect. Now the first tip is to uh, correctly set up your document that you're going to be working with. And to do this, it's as simple as uh, selecting the color mode RGB and setting your resolution to 72 dpi. If you're moving into web design from perhaps a print background, you'll probably be more familiar with uh, you know, the resolution of 300 dpi and the color mode of CMYK. So it's important when designing for the web that you switch this to RGB and have a resolution of uh, 72 dpi, 72 dots per inch. Okay. Now the second tip when designing websites in Photoshop is to give yourself um, a lot of space. Now let's take into consideration that the average smallest browser size that people are going to be looking at websites on is about uh, 1024 by 768. Therefore I want to make sure that my website's not really going to be any wider than about 980 pixels. Now despite we're going to make the website only that wide, I'm going to make my canvas um, a little bit wider so that I can see some of the background which will help me lay out the design. Okay, so tip number one, just to recap, is setting up document correctly with RGB, 72 dpi. And the second tip is to work with a lot of space, taking take into consideration the minimum average browser size of 1024 by 768. So uh, I've already set up a document, and let's just pop in a few elements, like I've created a background gradient, and just a sort of square to, to put in place, uh, sorry, a rectangle while we uh, you know, get moving on these points. This brings us on to tip number three, and that's working with grids. Now, grids are essentially gonna be a video blog all onto their own. They're really useful for essentially using uh, guides to help you lay things out on the page. And to, uh, to lay out these, these guides, you essentially just use the rulers that are present on the canvas and simply just drag those into place. If you do a bit of googling on um, you know, grids and guides for joining web, uh, websites, you'll be able to download PSDs that come with, um, you know, with grids and advice for how to set them up so that they're sort of pixel perfect. So tip three, work with grids. It helps you lay out a website and keep everything in context on the page. So tip number four, you'll see that I've created some guides down here that's gonna uh, allow me to create four little uh, tabs that we'll lay in. And I'm going to use the shape tool to create these, uh, you know, the, these shapes, these tabs. So let's start with the shape tool. And if I just really uh, zoom in on this corner for a, for a moment, and if I let's select a color, let's say uh, red perhaps. And if I draw a rectangle, hopefully you can see that the pixels of the rectangle are sort of blurred at the edges. Um, it's not sort of a pixel perfect shape. So let's delete that layer and try again. And what you want to do is look for this setting up here and push snap to pixels on the options. And what you do now when you create a rectangle, you'll see that it quite simply snaps to the pixels and you get a perfect square with no blurring around the edges. So let's just delete that and bring our canvas back up just moving this back into place let's zoom back out so let's uh, let's just switch that to black and let's just create our four simple blocks that we're going to use and like I said, uh, tip number four, if you set snap to pixels, you get nice, perfect rectangles. And you'll see that these are also snapping to my guides. This brings us on to tip number five, and that's using the Adobe Coolar uh, panel to help us select a, uh, a good range of colors, perhaps, for our tabs. If you're using uh, CS5, you can um, show the, uh, the Coolar tab by going to Window, extensions and it's already there built in. If you've got previous versions of Photoshop you can download the uh, the cooler extension 
And the great thing about Cooler is that uh, you can use the colors recommended to, you know, perhaps create sequences. So let me just go to Window and Swatches. Ooh, let's just get that back. So here are our swatches. And let's just say I like this one in Cooler. And again, you can browse all the different sort of color combinations, you know, via high face and so forth. Let's transfer those to the swatches panel. So you just see they've just popped in over there. What we can now do is color in our, uh, our rectangles, our rectangular shapes using the, our Cooler panel. So let's make the first one red, perhaps. The second one can be this recommended beige color. Third one, the sort of gray blue. And finally, the last tab, the sort of very dark navy. So tip number five is the cooler extension window for Photoshop. Um, if you're using sort of um, tabs or you know you need some sort of color schemes for your for your website layout, great place to start to get some inspiration for you know what colors work well together. So I've also created a few other elements just to sort of uh, help us move this uh, you know design sort of forward a little bit to help us look at some of these other elements as well that we're going to uh, introduce to the, to the layout. Let's just move our swatches back out of the way. So I'm just going to hide our grid layout now so that we can see the design a little bit better. Now the uh, sixth tip is something that I've sort of only just noticed and learnt recently. And that's if you're sort of playing around with gradients or uh, working with the shadows in the layer effects. If you hold down shift when you're when you're sort of creating those gradients, you can actually uh, better select angles like 90 degrees, 180 degrees and so forth. So just to show you that um, briefly, if I go to the layer effects on this layer here, let's go to inner shadow. You'll see sometimes it can be quite hard to sit and select uh, 90, but if I was just to simply push shift right now, you'll see that it quite nicely snaps around the various uh, angles. And that's the same sort of thing when you're creating uh, gradients. So let's just quickly create a new layer. And if I select the gradient tool and run the gradient of the page, you'll see again it's really difficult to uh, create a perfectly vertical gradient. Simply if I push shift right now, you'll see it snaps perfectly to vertical and will allow me to create a really nice uh, perfect vertical gradient. Okay, so that's uh, tip number six. Tip number seven, when you're uh, working with uh, fonts, for example, it's important that on the anti-aliasing setting, you select crisp. Crisp is the best way um, of displaying your typefaces for the web. And hopefully you can see the difference there between before and after. It sort of smoothens out the text, and it's the best way to format it for the web. And also when you're using typography in your layouts, it's important that you use web-safe fonts. Now it's okay to use um, you know, special typefaces, like for example this title here, I've just used DIN for example, but it's important to typeset as much information as possible in what we call web safe fonts, fonts that are installed on all computers as standard. So try and typeset uh, some, some or all of your uh, type content in, uh, in Arial or Helvetica, Times New Roman, something that's sort of uh, a cross-platform web safe font. The good thing about doing this as well is that when you show the client the initial prototype, there's not going to be much lost in translation when you sort of um, code it up. Another great tip for designing prototype websites, in particular in Photoshop, is to use real form elements. If you do a bit of googling, you can find uh, people have created uh, Photoshop downloadable documents for free, and they've uh, created uh, little form elements, like here I've got a little uh, Mac uh, OS X set, and uh, you can quite simply drag these onto your design and the one uh, PSD that I'm using in my example um, I've made uh, available the link available on uh, on the supporting blog post so let's just get a few more bits and pieces and uh, this can work really well uh, particularly if you're creating prototypes um, you know the Mac form elements look really nice and sort of help support uh, your prototype so tip number nine use real form elements they look really nice and uh, the PSD that I've got for here is from thanlax.com and I've made the link available on the uh, supporting blog post if you want to download that. So finally my uh, last tip is to use the uh, info panel or the info window which you can see just here. So I'm just dragging that away from my workspace. 
Now, uh, a lot of people don't have the info window displayed when they're designing websites. And the great thing that I like about the info window is that it gives you information about the page that you're currently browsing. So you can get a very uh, quick idea of the color references, CMYK references, where you're on the canvas. And quite interesting, if you select, for example, like this uh, red shape here, and if we uh, click uh, Apple and T, or Control and uh, T to transform the shape, you'll see that it shows you the width in pixels and the height of that shape that you have selected. And equally, if you use the marquee tool, for example, and let's say we wanted to know the width of this area here, you'll see that the width on the info panel and the height are giving us accurate uh, ideas of the sort of dimensions that we have selected. So really useful tool, the info panel. If you find that your info uh, units aren't quite accurate, perhaps they're in millimeters, simply go to Photoshop, Preferences, and Units, and just make sure that your units, rulers, and type are selected as pixels rather than millimeters or any of the other variables. Okay, so that's our uh, top tips for designing websites in Photoshop. Thanks for watching this week's video. If you've got any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them on our supporting blog post or YouTube channel. YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs>